Hello guys, welcome to Club 3D TV, you're listening to NVC and this is the third part video for the NVIDIA 560 Super Overclock Edition and it actually might be a 2.5 part video, it's a video I wanted to do just for the sake of it in some ways it will uh, benefit you casual and competitive gamers but not everything will be necessary, just take from it what you will and uh, use as you wish so once you're ready to go visit www.nvidia.com Remember, you, the drivers you get on the CD with the card are often outdated, but they do provide a great backup if you don't have access to an internet connection. Uh, obviously, download the latest ones because it will get rid of any kind of bugs coming to the new games you may have missed out on if you bought the game not directly on release or the graphics card, sorry. Uh, so, download drivers, select your graphics card here. So, the 500 series, the 560 on my Windows 7 64 bit operating system. Click search. You got the 280.26 drivers there released on the 8th of the 9th, 2011. Uh, click download, agree to the terms and conditions, and download. Uh, install the drivers, restart the system. Once you've done that, go ahead, right click the desktop um, screen resolution here. I've got 720p because I'm recording right now as we speak, but uh, obviously my native resolution there is 680 by 1050. And I'm using a ViewSonic VX2268WM 120Hz monitor or 3D monitor with 120Hz setting. Some passive 3D monitors won't have 120Hz. It's a cheaper way of producing them, but mine does. Uh, I do recommend if you are playing competitively, do pick one up. Um, as I've said in many other videos, uh, if, if you are using one, advanced settings here, go to monitor and select 120Hz under screen refresh rate if you can't see it hide mode this monitor can't display and select 120 hertz there and if you still can't see it make sure you are using the cable that comes provided with your monitor uh, because that's usually a dual link dvi cable or a uh, mini display port cable remember this graphics card doesn't support mini display ports so you may need an adapter from club-3d.com especially if you're using the new samsung monitors i am always up to date with my hardware stuff i am pretty much a geek uh so yeah do that then if you still can't see it um we have a bit of a problem but before we go into that also right click desktop personalize select windows 7 basic to give you the maximum amount of fps we are using windows 7 here under aero themes um, but quickly going back to the uh, monitor house again you want to right click the desktop select nvidia control panel in the little sub uh, bar that comes up else click nvidia settings in the taskbar um, go to display change resolution here again you have another way of selecting 120 hertz so 120 by 720 or 680 by 1050 from my native 120 hertz if you still can't see it then we have to delve into the unknown uh, click customize um, you probably won't be seeing it here under pc um, so create custom resolution now you have to be absolutely positive on what settings your monitor does support because you can damage hardware um, a quick or thorough google search should provide you with enough information else your monitors manufacturers website um, i know this monitor supports anything up to 1680 by 1050 and 120 hertz so all of that's fine there so technically i would be able to set that as follows if i couldn't um, use it um, and I should have 120 hertz if I still don't and you still don't then uh, you need to do some thorough digging because I can't really help you um, but I'm pretty positive that I should do everything for you uh, other settings here in the Nvidia control panel you might want to take a look at are as follows if you play Quake Live under a browser like Firefox what we can do is go to manage 3D settings under 3D settings and if we scroll up here we should be able to click program settings and here we go select a program to customize Mozilla Firefox now here I could select four times anti-aliasing now you can do this in many games that don't support anti-aliasing but you will experience significant FPS drops with Quake Live I know for a fact it supports and it doesn't affect FPS whatsoever further than it would anyway um, being anti-aliasing is more stress on the graphics card um, so here I would go ahead and select enhance the application setting and select four times here um, save by clicking apply before changing it back and the game instantly looks a lot less jaggy 
um, which is always nice. So that's how I have it set up. I'm going to come back in here in more detail later on and set that up uh, properly. But for now, I'm going to set everything back to default. It's just there. Um, so you guys know. Um, apart from that, you can go ahead in global settings. This is a very important setting here. Maximum pre-rendered frames. Um, if we go ahead and highlight it, maximum pre-rendered frames limits the number of frames the CPU can provide before the frames are processed by the GPU. Increasing this value can result in smoother gameplay at lower frame rates. And it's usually in reference to if your CPU is faster than graphics card, um, but uh, if you have low FPS, it also comes into play, um, as we as I'll explain shortly. Typical usage scenarios are reduces value if you experience a delay in response to input devices such as mouse, gamepad, or keypad, keypad, keyboard whilst playing games. And also, this feature only works in games using DirectX. Um, so, a quick example would be if you've got low FPS and you have a setting of eight, you're going to have high input lag, uh, but you have a very a lot smoother gameplay experience. If you have low FPS and have a setting of 1, you're going to have less input lag next to 0, but you'll have lower FPS. Um, and Generally, you just find to leave it at default of 3, but some games like Trackmania 2 Canyon have a similar setting inside of the game, so doubling them up increases the input lag even more. And also, if you do get lower FPS, which you're not going to at the moment with the current generation of games, really, unless you whack everything onto high with a stupid resolution of 2000 by 5000, I'm just making numbers up in my head, um, then this number may come into play. AMD also included in ATI Tray Tools, or in that program anyway, uh, as something called Flip Q Science, but NVIDIA actually included it in their drivers, which is nice. You know, you probably won't have to edit it, but I just thought I'd inform you guys of that setting. Um, and not a lot of people know about it, so it's also always good to, to know about, um, that's for sure. Uh, the only other setting in here that I would recommend thinking about is an adjust desktop color settings. Digital Vibrance. Now this is the best feature I've ever had in any graphics card. As you can see now it's on 55% which is for general browsing. Uh, default is 50. Uh, you won't be able to see on the video what it's doing. Um, hopefully in the lower right of your screen now you should see a bit of an example or maybe even full screen. Haven't decided you'll see at the moment anyway. Um, so it basically intensifies the colour on the screen so if you're playing Team Fortress 2 it intensifies the reds and the blues if you set it too high everything gets way too in your face and it's not pretty to look at so I usually have 55 for general browsing it's a little nicer than 50 um, I then have 60 I think for TF2 and I have 65 for Call of Duty 4 so I change it depending on the game I play but it just it, it just makes the game more fun to play as well as better to look at um, not only from a competitive gamer's perspective, but you know, just a general player's perspective. If, if you live stream like me, though, it's not going to make a difference to the guys watching. It's just client side, but uh, it's definitely something I recommend everyone who's moving to NVIDIA, or if you never even thought about looking at it as an NVIDIA user, checks out. It is the m my most favorite feature on NVIDIA cards, and I have thoroughly missed it uh, since moving away from NVIDIA several years ago. So definitely the main reason why I'm glad to be back. Um, apart from that, here you have the con uh, the PhysX configuration, which basically allows you to select the PhysX processor, the 560 GTX graphics card, or the uh, CPU. But that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps. Um, again, it wasn't really directly related to the review, but it may come in handy for some of you guys, um, especially competitive players. And again, if you enjoyed this video so far, don't forget to subscribe. And we have all the video gameplay tests to come in the next day.